Hello! Yeah, um, I'm Hendris, and I'll be uh, teaching you a couple of things about functional clothing and just character and clothing design. Um, both from a concept artist perspective, but also from a narrative and storytelling perspective. Since some things overlap really easily, especially when it comes to world building. World building means um, getting your world consistent, um, which ties in really well with the stuff that Abigail was talking about earlier with realistic um, dialogue and all that jazz. So, we are today going to become brave little tailors and we are going to check out clothing and armor designs. What makes them tick, uh, what's important to know, and all that good stuff. But first, let's go over the current itinerary, what we've got planned for today. Um, first, I'll tell you about the why, why we design stuff, why we design armor, clothing, and why we try to make things sparkle if we want to make them sparkle. If not, that's also fine. <laughs> Um, next up are important things to look out for when designing clothes. Um, and similar to Ogus, Dragonborns are like onions. You like layering, you like armor layering. Um, all that good stuff. I'm going to also gush about Gambeson, because I believe that Gambeson is the superior light armor, and I'm not going to shut up, <laughs> I'm not going to shut up about it. Um, it's heavily underutilized, especially in fiction, um, when it comes to comparing it with leather armor. But more to that later. Then, the importance of materials um, to make designs tick. Um, and then just the more uh, practical applications of clothing and armor. Um, how do you get into a glove? How do you get in into a cuirass? Is that dress really that tight? That's also stuff that you just need to consider when designing your characters and your outfits. And lastly, we're going to take a look at the Skyrim designs and the Skyrim armor and clothing and whatnot, see what makes them them and what's there to improve upon or what's there to learn from. Since there, there's a couple of things that, that Skyrim's armors, uh, that they're, a bit, they're, they're a bit infamous for that. Okay, let's get down to the why we do stuff. Um, first of all, clothing and armor always they they represent where you are and also who you are um where you are is going to be important for the world for the world building and for the internal consistency um different cultures have different clothing styles if you think about um weird belts strapped and and, and knotted around that's probably the a viking thing if you've got long dresses and and funny hats that's probably going to be like medieval stuff if you've got sandals and togas, that's like Greece or Roman. Um, each culture and each like region has their own unique kinks when it comes to how they design their clothing. And this would need to, um, to be carried over into fantasy worlds, especially with Skyrim, with High Rock, with Hammerfell, with elsewhere, with how many different climates we have and how many different cultures we have. Uh, think about wearing sandals. They're really good to have an anvil because, oh yeah, you can get your, your, your feet wet, you can feel the sand of the Golden Coast between your toes, but uh, wear sandals in winter hold and you would last like two hours before you would need to um, get some medicine from the local alchemist and try to thaw your feet up because they're frozen solid. This doesn't only apply to styles, but also to um, materials, which we're going to uh, talk about later. Just so you, that you know, um, different regions have different accessibility to different materials. So, for example, if you're going to still go with Skyrim, um, you've, got, you've got a lot of iron, steel, and other good ore in Skyrim. But when you're over in Morrowind, those people don't really have that much wood or um, leather to work with. They're probably going to go for chitin because a lot of their um, Fauna is just insect-based, so you would rather make your your 50th piece of heavy armor out of chitin instead of the very ex expensive to import iron. <clears throat> um, next is the the, the designs of, of characters. Um, a bandit over in Skyrim, or a, a bandit over in Winterhold, or the Pale, 
they have different clothing than the bandit in Agonia or even uh, down in in Valenwood. Um, and they are used to express both who your character is as a person and also who your character is as a stereotype or as a figure in um, in your province. Let's take a bandit in the pale. Um, you've got this 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 huge hunk of a man with like he's tall me he's two he's two meters tall he's two meters wide and he swings around a lethal hammer. That guy is probably packed with fur and above it iron, iron and steel to keep himself protected from both enemy attacks arrows but also from the elements. Uh, but when you're a merchant over in in, in Sodal or even in elsewhere, you don't need to wear a lot of heavy armor. Uh, apart from maybe an assassin who's being sent, there's no one coming after you, except if you're on the open road. But uh, then you would just need to change your clothes. So if you're in a merchant in like a palace or in, in the inner city, you can just show your wealth off because you're a merchant. You can do that. Uh, you want people to see who you are. And that just applies to um, characters in general. Um, and especially for characters and for personalities, uh, there's, a lot of mi- there's a lot of mixing and matching going on when it comes to clothing. Um, try to, to, to imagine yourself as like a peasant over in White One. You're working on the farm, and you've got a measly like 10, 20 septums per week to work with. If you want to get a new outfit, uh, things are either sold piece by piece, or you're going to get a second-hand thing, like a hand-me-down from, oh yeah, your big brother has, has outgrown his shirt, now it's yours. Um, people need to actually buy their clothing. That's something that's easily, that's easily forgotten. So you need to come up with good reasons. A, why someone would want to wear exactly that piece of clothing, and B, why they would choose to wear it as well, because that's two different um, two different horses entirely. Someone can buy an armor set but not really like it, but the other one can also just wear an armor set because it's the only thing they actually have. Okay, next up, layering. Oh, it's a great it, it's a great thing, and I love the fact that it has been invented. <laughs> Generally speaking, layering is just the idea of putting multiple layers of clothing or armor on top of one another. You do that every day. You probably wear shoes with socks, and you probably also wear underwear above your trousers or your shirt. Um, that is layering. If you put on a belt, that's also layering. If you put on gloves, that's layering. You put on different pieces of, of equipment or of clothing to um, either get a cool outfit going, or to um, serve a other different purpose. And so do your characters in video games. Um, if you buy the most random iron armor in any game, I assure you it comes with some other part that is not made out of pure iron. Um, like an undergarment, an undershirt. Um, and these are all things you that you want to consider when you wear and when you design your clothing and your armor pieces. Uh, let's take a steel cuirass, for example. You, you are, again, in Skyrim. And if you don't have anything to wear beneath that steel, it gets super cold. So, obviously, you want to uh, shield yourself from, obviously, incoming damage, but also from the cold that is your steel cuirass. So what you do, you put on something beneath it. Can be gambeson, can be a shirt, can be like just some random wraps that you found somewhere in the dumpster. Um, you want to make sure to give your designs coverage and just cloth because you don't want to have that much raw iron on your body. Um, imagine wearing a really tight sports shirt and you go running. I assure you, you can, you can, and you will become a sore afterwards if you don't. Um, tape off important pieces of your body. Um, so, whenever you design clothing and armor, especially, you need to make sure that nothing really lays on bare skin that's not cloth or some other soft and comfortable material. 
Um, Next up are just things to uh, put things together. So straps and latches. Um, as you can see in the picture, an, a, a cuirass is not only made out of iron, but also made out of leather. There's like some leather straps there, and some bolts and screws, and they are needed to hold the shape together. You can easily fit into a t-shirt or into a jacket because it's a soft, flexible material. But if you don't have a soft and flexible material and you want to wear it, you need to either bend it into shape, or you need to find a other way to open and close it. Um, anyone who has crawled into a bucket as a kid and has gotten stuck knows that struggle. Um, or, I don't know, um, or if you've gotten your head as a kid stuck between the, uh, the, the pillars of the stairs, of, of, of the stair um, hand railing, that's, <laughs> that, that's the same principle. Stuff that doesn't bend it's really difficult to get in and out. So when it comes to cuirasses, you, us you usually have uh, leather straps to um, to essentially just open it up, break it apart, and then uh, slip into it and then close it behind you again. Um, just like, I don't know, a zipper for shoes or pants. Another important thing to keep in mind when layering is the usage of insulation, especially with warmth. Um, we deal with that a lot in Skyrim and also at Mora, but cold is really one of the main factors that why you would want to wear stuff. Uh, if you don't wear stuff, or if, if you're not wearing any clothing, um, a slight breeze in the night and uh, you're going to get a cold. But if you have a proper cloak on you, or like a jacket, or some really comfortable clothes, um, you are insulated. You are warm, cozy, and even the breeze can't get to you that easily. Um, <clears throat> and each material has a different, like, let's say, grade of insulation that it can provide to you. Uh, thick wool is an amazing insulator. It keeps you warm and cozy and comfortable, and I love it. But if you're out in the winter stay with nothing more than, like, you know, a, a very thin layer of linen or other fabric. Um, try surviving with that. Try not getting a cold with those. <clears throat> and here's an example of um, layering done in vanilla Skyrim. This is concept art for, I think it's bandit armor for vanilla Skyrim. It was not put into the game, but it just goes to show you how you can layer a design. Um, granted, in pictures three and four, the guy is wearing um, chainmail armor under his helmet, which is a good idea, but you want to put on a cap first. This is something that everyone has, has experienced when they try to rip off a band-aid that they've put onto their arm. The hairs are getting caught, and with the hairs on the, um, the, the hat, <laughs> if someone janks at that, um, that chainmail, uh, it's going to leave more than just a couple of bruises. <clears throat> but all in all, um, the cave starts out with nothing more than a belt and some... some it's not even like proper pants, it's more like a kilt, really. And they just lay uh, and, and layer stuff on top of that to essentially get a preferable amount of layering and coverage. I don't really agree with the choice of their vest, since the most important organs are somewhere in the middle of your chest area, and you don't want to leave that unprotected. But who am I to judge? Maybe they're going to put on a curious after that. Layering doesn't have to work with, with, with armor only. It can also work with clothes. Um, this is concept art for the Skyrim Archmage armor, and you can see how well the artist has uh, has used layering to make the design just come together better. Um, if you take a if you take a look at this design, um, the women probably start up with some underwear and then put on pants, then the tunic, then she wrapped the um, the the hand wraps and probably also leg wraps on, then slipped into the shoes. After that, she um, she got her belt and tied it around her tunic, and then last but not least, she grabbed the hood, and I suppose the cape. Um, 
That's a couple layers. And they can impact both the shape of your clothing, but also can just impact how warm clothing feels. If you want to have a really cool trick to make your clothing feel more comfortable and more warm and fluffy, you can just have uh, fur sticking out of random things, like the boots, for example, or the, um, the cape. You can see that there's some fur sticking out there, and it makes us feel a bit more warm, um, even if it's not entirely fur-lined. <clears throat> when it comes to layering for characters and for clothing, always consider cloaks and coats. Um, cloaks are basically big blankets with the hood on, and they are amazing because they keep the warm in and the cold out. And they also work really well when you try to obstruct something. So um, if you're designing a really sneaky thief character, consider just give them just, consider just giving them a cloak so that they can hide behind it or that they can hide their utility belt in it. Um, because the utility belt is something that's really common to see in fantasy games and also just medieval fairs in itself. And that's just the idea of putting pouches not onto your clothing, but onto the belt. And then the belt can just come on and off. And it's actually a really well thought out idea. You don't need to just empty all your pockets out. You can just loosen the belt and be done with it. I'll get back to the, to the belt in a bit. Right, materials. Um, materials are really cool and they are really unique. So when you consider designing an outfit or an armor, there's three things you want to keep in mind at all times. What is the purpose? Is it comfort, protection, or status? Comfort, you've got like fur stuff, fur, clothing, um, really thick wool. They don't look too regal and too fine, but they get the job done. They're comfortable, they're warm, and they are easy to wear. Uh, there's protection. Do you seek protection against arrows? against a guy with the really big hammer, or just protection from the elements. Um, these three things need different um, ways to, to deal with them. If you're, going to protect, if you're going to protect yourself from, let's say, um, a hammer, maybe plate armor is not your best bet because plate armor dents really easily. And if you're going to get bonked on the head by a hammer, uh, no amount of plate helmets will help you there. But if you are dealing with a sword, consider not using plate armor, but chainmail, since chainmail was made with the idea to stop slashing attacks, like swords or axes. But they're more vulnerable to um, thrusting and to daggers and arrows and whatnot, because if you hit between the rings, um, that's going to leave a mark. <clears throat> Lastly, there's status to be considered. Um, is your character someone who would want to be recognized? And if so, to what degree? Um, do they wear their wealth on their sleeve or on their collar? Or um, do they not? Um, this is easily viewable with like merchants again, with nobles. If you take a look at, uh, at Skyrim nobles, they usually have some sort of jewelry um, on their outfit or just some like embroidered golden stuff on it. And yeah, that's just stuff to, 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 to just keep in mind. There's also uh, the origin of the outfit. If your blacksmith is from Skyrim and he works with Skyrim native materials, it's going to look different than if you're an Ultima who works with Ultima um, with, with, with materials native to the Somerset Isles. Um, and also, where, where, do your character, where does your character want to go with that armor? Um, so, for example, if you're designing um, a set of clothing for adventurers, or just like light armor for adventurers, um, try to keep them uh, as utilitarian as possible and as, um, what you call that? Um, if you can just have them both be usable in cold and warm climate, for example. So um, if your character is planning to go into the northern halls of Skyrim, they want to uh, pack in a another fur coat. But if they want to go south to Sodal, 
maybe they can just ditch the code and fork with and then and, and then head on uh, straight through. Right, we've already touched um, the materials of Skyrim a bit. Um, Skyrim's unique for like fur, leather, iron, wool, meat, and Stalrim. Stalrim's really more um, a thing for the uh, soul time and for very noble and very honorful warriors and whatnot. But Skyrim has different um, materials to work with than, for example, Morwood in comparison, or High Rock, or just any other province, because there's just different demand for per for materials in other provinces. Um, another thing to note is the the softness and the hardness of your materials. If you are designing heavy armor, you can go all out with plate armor. You can have that thing clank and clutter and rustle and everything. But if you are trying to be a sneaky thief and an assassin, perhaps, um, don't give them chain mail. Chainmail makes a lot of noise, and if you add chainmail to your thief, um, chances would be that he'd be e uh, that he'd be easily caught. Um, this also applies to weight and coverage. So, someone in heavy iron armor or like in heavy steel full plate armor, they're su suspected and supposed to move a bit slower than your your average Joe who's got nothing to weigh them down. This doesn't only factor in um, weight and, and and just you know noise, but also the heatness. Um, tying again back into the topic of insulation. If you've got a very tight leather armor, that stuff is going to be super warm for the player. Um, the closer a fabric is to skin, and the more is essentially there's a thin layer of air between skin and material and that layer of hair, the, the layer of air can get hot or cold and when air gets trapped it becomes very warm in there which is incidentally why a lot of medieval designs from the south of um, Europe from the Mediterranean uh, Greece Rome all those like ancient civilizations when you think about their clothing choices, you don't think of tight dresses, but rather just very flowy and very um, loose-fitting clothes. Just because a an, an, a slight breeze of air can uh, go a long way with 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 those things. <clears throat> right now, I'm on to my ten minutes of ranting. Um, leather armor. I really dislike leather armor as a material. And as its representation in like a lot of um, fantasy games. First of all, it's going to be very difficult to actually just put on because leather is a very uh, sturdy material. You can't easily bend it that well. And if you've got more than one layer of leather on there, um, good luck getting in and out of that on a whim by yourself. Next up is the actual sound of, 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 of leather. Um, everyone knows the sound of new leather shoes or trying to get comfortable in, in, in a big leather chair. That armor actually makes a lot of noise. And I don't know, I just don't like it. <laughs> if you're trying to go with thief characters or like with, with, with light weight characters, consider ditching the leather for something that's way better. The Gambeson. Ah, Gambeson. It's really cool and it, 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 it's cloth armor, but layered cloth armor. We've got the onion skins again. <laughs> Gambeson is made out of a lot and just lots and lots and lots of layers of um, cloth and wool and whatnot, or even just linen. Um, think of it as the onion skins of the light armor category. <laughs> You don't see it too often in Skyrim, to be honest. You only really see it in the Stormcloak armor, which you can see as the vest chest piece thing. You see the brown, um, yeah, the, yeah, the brown tunic that the Stormcloak soldier is wearing there. Gambeson is cool because it's surprisingly sturdy and really well insulating. It keeps warm. It's resistant, which means that even if you whack at someone with the axe, with the sword, 
um, you you know they 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 will still feel an impact, but chances are that sword or that axe is getting caught uh, after like layer seven, eight, or even twelve of cl- of of cloth. Um, it's basically a really thick jacket or a vest that you can just put on. Since it's again, it's just cloth. It's flexible. You can easily uh, wear it. You can just um, wear it like a hoodie or like a jacket. And if it's a bit more sturdy, you just have some more leather straps there. It's also a great piece of uh, equipment to work beneath your iron or your metal layer when it comes to layering again. Um, Because, well, it's comfortable. Gamerson is really comfortable to wear. Um, But one thing to keep in mind when designing with Gamerson is that it's super easy to just slap on a Gamerson and be done with it. And the design just looks boring. Imagine that sto- that Stormcloak soldier without that flowing blue uh, tablecloth. It'd really just be a guy in a leather vest tunic with some boots and gauntlets and maybe chainmail for the shoulders and the arms. But I'm not, really, I'm, I'm not sold on the chainmail there either because, again, the chainmail is on skin. And if you're going to get your hair stuck in there... um. It's going to be a bit on the annoying side of things. So, whenever you design with gambas in the mind, cover it up, or uh, have just fun with it in, in other terms. Put a cloth over it, a tablecloth, maybe a belt, maybe two belts, maybe an amulet, a scarf, uh, a cloak. You can put stuff on top of that gambeson to make it feel less uniform. And I agree, Gamersons often, um, sorry, Gamersons often offers more protection than leather, just by the fact that it's layered. Right, um, next up, wearing and actually getting in and out of armor. I've already touched upon that, so I don't want to dwell on it too long. Um, but you can just see this concept art. This is concept art for the steel plate armor for Skyrim. You can see on the side view and on the back view, there's some leather straps there. This means that the artist thought about how to get in and out. Um, especially with the steel plate armor, you've got this like um, this collarbone uh, piece, which if you look at the back part of it, you can just detach and probably just uh, take off entirely. And then you've got the actual cuirass, which is secured on the sides by leather straps. So if you undo those leather straps, you are, on, you are either going to be left with two half curiouses or with just one curious that just opens up like a, uh, I don't know, like a bag. <clears throat> so whenever you design stuff, try to be mindful of any characters that have to actually wear it, get into it, and get out of it. This is something that also applies to like um, other um, roleplay games or just even D&D and other pen and paper role, um, roleplay games. Uh, Walking the entire time with armor on is actually really tiring. Um, Im- imagine just walking around with like 30 kilograms or I don't know, 60 pounds of just pure steel on your back, on your shoulders, on your hips. That's going to drag you down and that's going to make you really fatigued. So be mindful of that when designing armor. And again, put something beneath that's that cold steel, especially in the winter. Cover yourself up. <laughs> I've already um, spoken about the art of sticking a bucket onto your head, which is um, the 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 daring piece with the with the chainmail um, hood on it. Um, when you put on helmets, it's actually really difficult to get in and out, especially if you have no way of making the neck opening wider or having it somehow close after your chin went through. So whenever you're designing full face helmets, and helmets that cover more than just half your face, essentially helmets that cover more than a regular bucket, um, try to be considerate of how the player would actually be able to fit their head into said helmet. And if they're wearing a helmet, make sure to give them a cap or something to catch their hairs beneath it. Um, Otherwise, mm, you've probably... You've probably all heard the terrible sound of something metallic 
being left in your um, pants pockets, and that's and, 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 and those pants wandering into the washing machines. And now imagine that noise being your brain and your head just getting rackled while instead of a helmet. <clears throat> um, so, yeah. Be mindful of how to get in and out of your stuff of your clothes and of your armors. It applies a bit more to armor, just because by the fact, it's, it's, it's just virtue of the fact that armor is a bit more, uh, it's less flexible than cloth or other just pieces of, of clothing and apparel. <clears throat> right, let's take a quick look at the designs that we've seen in Skyrim and how they used layering and functionality of their clothes as corner pieces and cornerstones. Uh, this is the Nordic civilian clothing, or the commoner's clothing. And you can just see that, if you take a look at it, the artist, I think um, this is one of Adam, Adam Adamanovitz's pieces, the artist has used different colors for each layer. So the, he's, the, the character started with a white layer, then blue, and then brown on top of it. You can always use colors to make your layers feel distinct and to make them feel well separate from one another. <clears throat> um, especially when it comes to the corset of the women or the jacket of the man. <clears throat> if you don't want to color grade your different layers, you're going to end up with something a bit sim more similar to the bandit armor here. This is fur armor. Uh, it's, it's just pieces of fur stitched together, or like different fur stitched together. You can kind of see that there was a bit of layering going on, but it's really not that well visible. Um, the banner probably started with some underwear, then they put on probably a, you know, they, then they put on their, their tunic, maybe pants, then the leg wraps, then the arm wraps, and the arm guards, the gloves, and above that there is the, the hood, or the, uh, the bit of a cape that's bound together in the front. <clears throat> and lastly, the belts, probably. So, even with um, armor pieces that are supposed to look really uniform, you can still do a lot of layering there. Um, just be prepared to, for, for it to be less obvious to the player or to any onlooker. Uh, next piece of layering, dwarven armor. And something that we've all seen and dreaded, the dreaded dwarven seal on naked flesh, uh, which it seems to be the way on the leftmost concept art. But if you take a look at the the middle ones, you can see that there's cloth woven in, which means that it's at least implied that the character is wearing some sort of cloth beneath it. Um, everything that I've talked about with keeping yourself warm in cold climates also applies to keeping yourself cool in warm climates. Imagine being a dwarf and being confronted with a dwarven centurion, angry that you took his lunch money. And that bad boy is going to steam you until you're cooked. <clears throat> um, metal heats up really well, but it also cools down really, uh, and then it just freezes really well. Which is just another point in cover yourself up, put clothes, put um, fabric beneath your steel um, measurements or your steel pieces of any clothing. Essentially, if it's hard and if a sword can't get through it, you're best putting a layer of cloth beneath it. <clears throat> Here's another piece of how layering can impact the feel of a character. The band on the far left looks very poorly clothed. Um, granted, they've got their heart and lungs a bit better protected with that whole big belt buckle thing. Um, but uh, hit him in the arm or in the in the shoulder, and he's not looking so fresh. Or just stab him in the in the abdomen. The one in the middle is covered better. He switched up the well. He, he's just added a cuirass, really made out of leather or just scaled um, or just. It might even just be Brigandine. We are. It's really difficult to tell. <clears throat> uh, he just opted in for 
another layer beneath the like giant fur belt i <laughs> i'd assume and he looks a bit work- he looks better covered granted there's still some some pieces on the shoulders and on the arms where an enemy ca- might get a lucky hit in but now he's not bound to be killed by an arrow to the stomach or a um, a swift strike to the side <clears throat> Now the guy on the right side, while I don't appear, while I while I don't agree with his choice of horned helmet, he's covered up. He's got everything going. He's uh, upgraded his his boots, his um, giant fur belt, and you can also see that he's got a cloak gun and some additional pieces of protection for the shoulders and the arms. <clears throat> This is all to say that the better someone is covered up, the more sturdy they look. And the more they look like they can just take a hit or two or six. <clears throat> right. Uh, I've already alluded to it with the horn helmet. Let's get into the pointy bits of clothing and especially of armor. Um, and that's something that Skyrim is very, very guilty of. The Daedric armor. To the left, you've got the Daedric armor concept art for Skyrim. And on the right side, you've got the Daedric armor for both Skywind and Sky Oblivion, which are remakes of um, Morrowind and Oblivion, taking inspiration from their respective games' um, Daedric armor. That Skyrim Daedric armor looks really uncomfortable. Like, really, really uncomfortable. Um, try to scratch yourself on the butt there without impaling yourself or your buttocks. Um, same goes for your head. Imagine not wearing the helmet and trying to look over your shoulder. Um, good luck not trying to get your eye stabbed out, and even with the helmet on, you might get your eye stabbed out by those enormous um, just spikes everywhere. It looks cool, I admit, but boy, is it non-functional. These spikes are purely there to either A, annoy the wearer, or B, intimidate the opponent. Um, granted, if you are going to wrestle with that armor, um, you're just covered in spikes. That's the same uh, defense mechanism that a rose or a strawberry, in the, sorry, sorry, a, a raspberry has. Um, on the other side, you've got the other armor sets of Skyblivion and Skywind. Um, They've exchanged those spikes, at least most of uh, most of them, for just plates and just plates beneath one another, made out of ebony and some vaguely daedric-looking material and cloth. They look a lot more lightweight than the one in Skyrim, but they also look easier to wear for both the eye and the person wearing that armor. <clears throat> so. Yeah, think about that next time you design your really cool uh, daedric weapon that's got a pointy end, where in 8 out of 10 times you're going to impale your own hand just trying to grab the damn thing. <clears throat> right, let's get down to the functionality of some um, common like pieces of equipment that any adventurer or any medieval dude would probably wear at one point or another. First, belts. Belts are backpacks, but they're way easier to access. You can wear a belt above clothing or beneath it. Uh, If you wear the belt beneath your clothing, you will have the, the, the actual bags or whatever is on that belt. You will have it heavily obscured, but it's less easy to actually just reach it. <clears throat> Compared to belts that are um, worn at the last layer, where you can easily reach down to your pouch, you can get your wallet, you can get your sword unsheathed. But um, if you've got a pocket of gold dangling on your side and hips, and those coins make some really comfortable noises, and suddenly those noises are gone, um, yeah. No luck, you are being robbed, or you have been pickpocketed, and those coins are gone, because everyone could see where your wallet is. <clears throat> belts are also really well uh, 
customizable. You can put on more pouches if you're, I don't know, if an alchemist, you can get pouches that that uh, holds the vials or bottles. If you are a mage or someone who is writing with a lot of books, there's probably like a couple um, const- contraptions that let you carry your spell book or other important books right at your belt. Or you can just have a sheath and your sword on the belt. Um, although you can also just stick your sword between belt and clothing. That also works. A often forgotten about uh, thing when it comes to um, knotting, not, not, not knotting, but just tying your belt. If you're going to with, with the Skyrim approach of having a knot in your belt, consider adding a bit of iron uh, to the end of the belt. That way, the, be- the belt is um, weighted down and it's less likely to just swirl up and swirl around and get all weird and, com- and uncomfortable. Which increases the weight of the belt, but also just makes it a bit easier to control, especially when you're running. Um, and something that not many actually uh, keep in mind, when you have your belt tight, you can also just have a regular belt buckle. You can just tie your belt normally with a belt buckle, and then the access leather strap part of the belt just gets uh, tied down, because where else would you put that thing? Um, leather straps are a godsend. They are used to tie things down, tie them up, and have them still be easily untieable. Especially if we can, if if, if we still go with the whole belt buckle idea. Um, shoes in medieval times or in fantasy times, they're not that well designed. Usually, it's really just some leather held together by uh, leather straps. If you're going to go with the classic Skyrim uh, fur boots, it's probably some sort of leather fur contraption that's being tied to your lower leg ends via strings, cords, and leather straps. It's really just a product. It's, it, they're really just products of the time, since back then you didn't have zip lines or zip ties, so you would have to knot things together to have them not come. Uh, open again. You can use leather straps everywhere. Belts, backpacks, uh, leather armor, uh, gambeson, and also the good old iron cuirass and leather, uh, sorry, and then seal and whatnot, just to have an easy way to slip in and out of armor. But keep in mind, if you are dressing your character up as like this real royal knight, with the most extravagant and elaborate armor possible, keep in mind that <laughs> he would still need a helping hand or two or three or four to just get that that that, that armor set on. Good luck trying to reach um, on your back, trying to find the hole in the leather strap to put your pin in. If leather's not available, use rope. Um, if ropes are not, not available, use string. If strings are available, where are you? Use hair. <laughs> um, <clears throat> a lot of functionality comes just from the from, from the ability of keeping things tied down and tied together, which done via belts and also just leather straps and also just leather straps. Um, hoods, hoods are great. I don't know why we lost them on the way into the modern times. Um, maybe they've been compromised by the invention of the hoodie, but the ability to get... Um, yeah, it, it, people have treasured the fact that you don't get wet on your head while it's raining if you're wearing a hood. Um, hoods, cloaks, and capes. Capes are the ones that Superman wears. Cloaks are the ones that the Hobbit wears. Um, when they're made out of wool, they're super warm. They're comfortable. Um, if you have the ability to get one, Get one. Um, they are amazing. They keep yourself warm. They're easy. They're they're, they're easy to, to to manage, and they are basically the medieval version of a raincoat or a rain mantle or a trench coat. Um, if a good layer of cloth keeps the wind out and the warm and, and the warmth in, 
if you want to have to to have it that way. If you have the cloth be all flowy, then wind comes in, warmth goes out. Another part of layering is putting the is, is putting one layer of soft stuff over a layer of hard stuff, which sounds really <laughs> that came out wrong. But um, basically, if you have a cloak or a hood, you can easily obscure daggers with it. You can also obscure plate armor with it or just chainmail. Um, if they don't see what you're wearing, they don't know what you're wearing. And um, if you line a cloak or a coat with fur, it looks even more cozy, it looks even more comfortable, and it's probably warmer. I've already touched upon the subject of warmer climates. Um, here's some, oh god, Greek clothing. And you can just see how loose everything fits. Not necessarily the armor, but uh, when it comes to just the regular average Joe's clothing, they've got sandal and loose fitting pieces of cloth bound together or just sewed together um, with the very fashionable tablecloth to the right. Another good part of having layers is that you don't... So when you're layering up, you don't have to put on more and more stuff. You can also lose more and more stuff, depending on how comfortable you want it to be and how warm you want it to be. So let's say the guy on the right bottom side, he's really warm. He's ditching the cloak or the like tailcloth, and he's going in with just like the white flowy bits of his outfit, which are right now heavily obscured. He's probably going to, he's probably going to be a bit cooler, uh, but not cooler because he ditched the really cool red cloak. Um, so there's that. The rule of cool still applies to a lot of um, designs. And the last bit is. Form follows function. Uh, people who have studied Bauhaus know this, but um, things to keep in mind when designing is A, clothes should fit multiple people. So if you're designing a commoner's clothing set, um, be prepared to have that set be worn by the drunk tavern dude, by the blacksmith apprentice, by a courier, by a farmer. Um, a lot of jobs will wear your clothing. So, uh, suit up, especially when it comes to unique clothes. If you put down a character, if, if you design a set of clothing for the expressive desire to put it on just one character, that character is going to die, either through Quest or through the player's hand, because they want to have that unique piece of clothing. We've seen this all in the. Um, in the Emperor quest for the for, for the Dark Brotherhood, where the player goes in and kills the Emperor, the Emperor is wearing Emperor's clothes. I don't think there's another set anywhere apart from maybe the shelf over there that the Emperor has in his bedroom. But if the player sees a unique piece of clothing item, they want that. Same applies to the Destroy the Dark Brotherhood questline, where there's like where what's his face. Uh, n n the, the, the red guard, Nazir. He is wearing unique um, Ali Key armor with a different color tone to it, or a different color ensemble. Um, the player is probably going to kill him just for just to get their hands on his clothing. Either that, or, go, or that they're going to, to level up their pickpocketing perks and get him while he's sleeping. Layering also has, at least from a design perspective, a certain maximum. Uh, try not to have like more than three or four layers per body part. So you don't need to have four gloves on. You don't need um, two shirts, a chainmail, and then a um, a piece of plate. Sometimes. It Sometimes, at, at least for the purpose of designing stuff, less is more. While I appreciate it, um, you can go overboard with layering. Uh, to further go into the, the idea with form follows function, if you design um, a set of armor or clothing for like one type of person or one like group of persons, make sure that they fit and 
mm, take a look at stuff that doesn't really fit. For example, if you're going to make a clothing piece or an, an, an armor set for wild warriors, you know, the berserker types, um, they don't need a pouch for scrolls or for books. Uh, whereas a mage rope, in most cases, don't need um, more than just one hill for like a dagger or something like that. I doubt that a mage would wear something as heavy as an armor. Uh, sorry, as something as heavy as, as 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 a huge hammer, for example. So maybe with the mage ropes, ditch the whole diagonal belt to keep the um, back fastened hammer, axe, great sword. Um, your designs will need to be tailored to whoever is trying to buy that. Um, yeah, I've already talked about that. Make sure that a tailor would have access to those um, items or to the materials. So, um, if you're going to go with a blacksmith armor, so if, if if you're going to go with a Skyrim blacksmith's armor, so a a, a set of clothing or armor that only blacksmiths in Skyrim wear. Um, ditch the gold and ruby and the moonstone and say hello to silver, iron, fur. And just the last bit is just trying to still have them functional but also really good looking. That's the hardest challenge when it comes to designing stuff. But that's also the most important part of designing the, um, clothes and armors. Uh, make sure that in the end they look good. It's totally all right if you have to make a couple of concessions and a couple of compromises uh, for functionality in favor of the rule of cool. Because God knows it, we all love to see uh, back fastened giant swords and shoulder pads with capes on them and fur sticking out of a lot of gauntlets and whatnot, and really shiny plate armor, despite it might it, it probably not being. Nah, just the right thing. Um, there's a case to be made about the about the utility of back fastened uh, swords, like you see in Skyrim with the great swords, because uh, it's really difficult to get them back into the sheath if you have the sheath on your back and you can't see it. Right, that's it. Um, thanks for your attention. Uh, are there any questions? There is. Uh, first of all, thank you for the really nice introductory and informative uh, slideshow and, of course, your words. I was wondering if you could lose some some words about uh, practicality, so to speak, or lack thereof, and defensive quality of uh, the boob, boob plate, which uh, we've been oh, the boob plate. privy to yeah. see yeah, on, the, on the plate uh, concept art for female plate armor. Yeah. I think it was a wonderful um, example of boob plate. Uh, so technically, I think most pieces of heavy armor try to guide the sword or the axe or the hammer away from any important pieces. That's why you don't see any Viking horn. That that's why you don't see Vikings with the stereotypical Viking helmet with the horns on them. Uh, that horn would get caught by a sword really easily, and that would be no bueno. Um, I think. <sighs> There's a case we made with Boo Armor. I know that um, it exists, and I know that there's also... Oh god, we've had that discussion in the AU maybe like a week before. Um, Google the armor of... I think it was either Henry the Third or Henry the Seventh. I don't know. There's a, a very peculiar piece of armor choice. Oh god, why are you That's bringing me. that up now? <laughs> <laughs> it just came to mind, okay? Um... Good lord. <laughs> I mean, peculiar amateurs does sound more like Henry VIII, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was one of the Henrys. I don't know. There's a lot of them. <laughs> um, it look. It, it, it that's probably it, it's probably a debate between comfort and utility. Really, um, I would assume that as a female, I, <laughs> I, I'm not speaking from experience here. I would assume that things would get a bit um, tight in the chest area, which is why you would want to have at least a bit of um, a 
dent in your armor piece to make sure that nothing's um, too tight up there. Mm. But with the Skyrim boot armor, in that there's like this crease in the middle, mm, it might deflect the sword or the weapon in a very unfavorable way. Mm. 